Hi, and welcome to church. It's great to come around the Word together and uh, to be in His presence. So let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Lord, this is a day you have made, and we do rejoice in it. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. And all God's people said, Amen. I have a scripture, Mark 4, 23. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Now that's an interesting scripture because we all have ears. Most of us can hear. But what is, this, what is God really trying to say to that? And I really believe in this time, it's really important that we hear what the Spirit is saying, what Holy Spirit is saying. Recently I talked about listening to the Good Shepherd, which is Jesus. And it says his sheep know his voice. So we really need to hear what he is saying to us in this very time, in this very hour. I had some suggestions of things to do and which I will want to go over and ways to actually hear what the Spirit is saying. The first one was read the Word. You know, it's, it says this Word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, able to discern between flesh and blood, soul and spirit. And we know that it was written by the Holy Spirit through man. It's such a powerful thing. But have you ever tried reading the Word and sometimes you just get distracted? Or have you ever tried reading the Word and you just get tired or sleepy? I really believe that's a spiritual thing. That's almost like a distraction to stop you from reading the Word because the enemy does know the Word of God and how powerful it is. In fact, he used it with Jesus when he tempted him in the wilderness. He actually used the Word of God against him but Jesus knew the higher authority of the word of God and could counteract it because he knew the word the other one is to meditate on the word and it's like a cow chewing the cud and if you've ever seen a cow chew the cud it's pretty ugly but it continually chews and chews and chews on that one piece of grass getting all the nutrients and goodness out of it and that's what we have to do with the word is continually uh, chew over it I find this sort of easier to do than getting into deep study. When you're reading the Word, there's levels you can go to. You can just read it and breeze it. But you may want to get into a deep study and, and cross-reference. But to meditate on the Word, um, you can take a scripture. I personally, at the end of the day, read the Word before I go to bed. And sometimes I'm quite tired, but I just read my Bible app and, and then maybe go to the prayer section which I'll talk about in a minute but um, to read the word and to meditate on it is just so important in fact Holy Spirit told me to if the word of God's not in something then not to worry about it it's because that's the thing that doesn't return void that's the thing that is life-giving and life breathing I used to do youth and it was so important to give them the word of God you could give them the entertainment and games and that but what is that going to do for their future when, when they come against things in life that they need to hear the Spirit of God? Unless the Word is sown into there, it's, it's, not, it's not going to be effective. And I gave them the SOAP acronym, which I probably shared with you, which is firstly S stands for Scripture. So you read the, the Scripture or write it down. The second one is O for observation. What is this really saying? What is this saying to me? The third one is A for application. How does it and how can I make it apply to my life? And the fourth one is prayer. And prayer is just so important. It's just that relationship and talking to God and him hearing your heart and you hearing his. It's a two-way thing, prayer. And as I was saying about the Bible app at night, I love it because it says, now, now spend time with God and separate yourself sort of remove the distractions and breathe and I don't know if you understand breathing is so important deep breaths just to actually recenter your emotions and get yourself ready to hear and and it says to pray and it talks about the goodness of God and how how good he is the next one was worship and as you know I love worship and as we worship I feel felt impressed that we're meant to go back to Davidic worship. So what exactly is that? Well, David worshipped unabandoned freely before his king. 
but he also had the temple of God built for, for, for him. And the temple court had the outer court, the inner court, and then the most holy of holies. And over the door it said, the way, the truth, the life. So we're to and sorry, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So this is what we're to do. We're to come and worship him in spirit and in truth. And as we do, things shift. Atmospheres change. Our heart changes. Even our brain, the chemical balance in our brain changes. And I've, I've experienced this time and time again where I've been feeling heavy and burdened and, and I come and worship and I come out refreshed, renewed, it's just amazing. So I go to give what I think is a sacrifice of praise and God meets me there and he touches me and, and shows me things that I don't see in the natural. He shows me things in the spiritual. It's just such a beautiful thing. So it's interesting to just go into that place and be in his presence. The other thing is prayer and fasting. Now prayer is talking to God. And some people say, well, I, I don't know how to pray. God gave us a blueprint in the Word of God. It's, it's the Lord's Prayer. It is our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. So we acknowledge him. We acknowledge who he is and honor him. Our Father which in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Asking the Lord to grant our requests according to his riches in glory, according to what he wants in our life. And give us today our daily bread. You know, before we come with our shopping list, I think it's good to honour the king. But we come to him and say, Lord, this is our need. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And that clearly is a reminder of what God has done at the cross, what Jesus did, that he forgave us our sins and to freely forgive others. And deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're acknowledging who he is, his deity. He is the king. And his kingdom shall reign and we shall reign in it. Amen. It's just such a beautiful place to start. But even our heavenly language is such a gift. If you don't know what to pray in the natural, we have that. And I want to encourage you to seek that, to ask for the gift of Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues because it stirs up your innermost being and it edifies you and builds you up. It's an amazing gift that God has given to all his children if you just ask and receive it. And then also fasting. Now, fasting is probably not the most popular, but it is so, so beneficial and so powerful. You know, Rob and I recently fasted for 21 days, and there's different kinds of fasts you could do. We, we t chose to do the Daniel fast. We felt impressed to do that. And I think we tied it in with the Shemitah, start of the Shemitah year, which is really amazing. But it was on the 21st day that God really answered our prayer. We were seeking him for a specific thing, for the new season that we feel we're heading into. And God answered that prayer. And it was just so powerful. So it was just that dying to self and not focusing on the things of this world, not focusing on, on, on food, but focusing on him. And he does meet you at your point of need and, and answers those prayers. So it was just so powerful. But in the end time church, which I feel this is where we're at, this time, this point in history, it is so imperative that we hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, which is you, if you're a born again believer. Now I just want to unpackage what that means, because if you're listening and you don't understand what it is to be born again, there was a religious leader called Nicodemus and he snuck to Jesus at night and wanted to know about the kingdom of God and he wanted to know. So I'm just going to read from scripture so you know. It's in John 3 and it, it says the new birth. There was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, 
Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus and answered said to him, Are you a teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. It was a shame Nicodemus couldn't understand. But it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual rebirth. And so it's an opportunity. I made a decision 37 years ago to receive that gift of salvation. And it was just a humble prayer that I made to the Lord God. It says, if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth, that he is the Son of God, and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. And it was simple. It was, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner for what I've done and the path that I've led. Come into my heart and be a part of my life and take me as your child. And it was that simple. He did that. And my life did change. And I'm so glad I made that decision. In fact, I'm so glad to, today I have that anchor of my soul that in these times I know who I am and who God is. And how much he loves me. So in these times, we must hear what the Spirit is saying to us. In fact, I believe, like I said, it's that end time. And in Revelation, it says at least several times that you must hear what the Spirit is saying to you. If you have ears to hear, to hear what the Spirit is saying. And I want to encourage you, read Revelation. And it says you'll be blessed. I have been so blessed. I've been studying Revelation with, with our, our church group this year. Uh, we've, we've been studying Chuck Misler's uh, Revelation. There's 24 studies. Very, very, very good studies. And it's just really blessed me that I really have more of an understanding and grasp of what is really going on around me because of that. And I have been blessed. And it promises you in the Word that you would be blessed if you read it. As I was looking at this, I looked at something from Joseph Prince and he talked about the parable of the seeds and he talked about the seeds as being the word of God. Now, I've always thought the seed was the word of God for salvation, which I believe that that is part of that scripture. However, I think it's far more deeper than that. So let me read this, the parable of the seeds. And we're just going to go to... Mark 4, 1 to 9. Okay. Here we are, Mark 4. And again, this is Jesus, he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into the boat and sat in and on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables, and he said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some, fell by, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And immediately it sprang up, and because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell, seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop, and that sprang up, increased and produced, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, He who has ears 
let him hear. See, even Jesus said, if you have ears to hear, listen and hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But that those who are outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not, un- not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. So it, that's what repentance is, turning and accepting God and his sins be forgiven and hearing what the Spirit is saying. That born-again experience is so important. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. They hear, Satan comes and immediately takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. I've had that experience where I'm sharing the word and I see all of a sudden a glazed look comes over their eyes and it's like they're not hearing anymore. And the word that I'm sharing with them is taken away and stolen. And I'm so grieved for them because of their loss. And then there's ones by the wayside though the word is sown. And when they hear, sorry, they're likewise, there's one sown on stony ground. When they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And then they have no root and in themselves and so endure only for, for a time. Afterward, when tribulation and persecution, persecution rises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. So they, they get the word and there's no depth in it. There's no, it's like, oh yeah, I'll grab this. And I've seen that before where people are grabbing everything around them, every different type. Oh, this is the latest height. This is the latest religion that they go to. But it's not a deep seed. It's so important once you're saved to, to continuing on the journey and getting around the Word of God. But the cares of the world, and when they've challenged about their faith, they walk away. Now there's a, the ones sown among thorns, and they are the ones who hear the Word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering, choke the Word, and it becomes unfruitful. And I've seen many a good person that has uh, been saved and walking the journey, yet they've been tempted and they've walked away and followed the temptations and basically lost what they had, the cares of the world choking it away. I, 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 I've seen the pattern time and time again where it's like the enemy puts something in their path to just distract them and take them away. And it's just, it's just hard to see as a pastor. But then those are ones that are sown in good ground and those who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. So I just want to encourage you that the word of God is so important. It says it's a word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to the path. We need the word of God. We need it so deeply in our spirit that it does get quickened to our mortal body in a time of need. I know when I was a young Christian, I didn't always understand, but whatever God was speaking to me got in. And at our home group recently, someone was saying, I don't always get all the depth of this study, but when, but, but something will come out when I need it to. And that's the excitement about the word that is living. It's a living word. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to discern between flesh and blood, soul and spirit. But that's the parable of the seeds. It's so important to allow the truth of God's word. Mark 4, 24 goes on to say, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use it, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. And I was, I was sharing my last sermon and listening to the Good Shepherd that you need to be intentional about what you're hearing and what you're letting yourself hear. And I want to share again that I was listening to lots of news because there's so much going on in our society, especially with the, the COVID. And so I was listening to what they were saying on the news. And what was happening was I was hearing the news but being bombarded with it. 
And it was like almost an attack on my mind where I, I was starting to feel the weightiness of it. I was starting to feel grieved by it and probably depressed. And I went, something's wrong here. It wasn't until I came and worshipped and I felt this weight lift off my shoulders. And I went, oh, I've been getting, I've been getting stressed and bogged down in this. And I'm listening too much to the world and what's happening in, in this COVID. Now, I don't, I don't mean to be ignorant, but I just mean to be wise. I need to counteract that with the truth of God's word and to know his truth. See, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So there is one truth that I can really resonate with, and that's what the Holy Spirit tells me. And as the world is, the world's systems belong to the devil. That's what it says in the word of God. And the world... The, the news and the world becomes part of the world systems. What we see on TV and what we allow into our lives through that medium is can be very detrimental. In fact, just 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 for interest's sake, I was listening to uh, reading something and hearing what the top world powers, five world powers, um, power brokers type thing, conglomerates what they have shares in and the most amount of shares in. And I just want to share some of them that I can remember. And then it was Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. They have shares, very high shares in them. McDonald's, Coke, Pepsi, Disney, Google and news, news, news programs and Facebook. They were the ones that these top five world powers, surprisingly, surprise, surprise, have shares in all these. So if you put all the dots together, when you have a share in something, you have a stake or a claim in that. You have a possession of that or a, a, an intent. It's like when you come to church, you, you choose a church that you attend based on um, what's been preached and what kind of uh, worship they do. And you make a choice and you come to that because that relates to you and you have a vested interest in, in that what they're doing. So you are in agreement. So these top five powers have vested interest in, in, in these companies and they, they want to have some influence with these companies. So I guess you've got to put the dots together. Be careful what you hear. In fact, recently on the news there was a protest up at the border and some friends of mine went there and they said, oh, it was amazing. It was, said, it was just beautiful. People were praying and worshipping. There were... Um, there were people coming together very passively um, protesting and there was a cross put in the ground at the end, a stake made and some, a prayer box. They were going and hugging policemen. <laughs> it was just just a good good protest, very passive, uh, just, just a voice to be heard but not... Anyway, one guy was evidently just encouraging people quite loudly. So the news took footage of that guy and said it was a rowdy raucous protest and they were basically aggressive and it was so far from the truth also recently i heard that there was um plenty of people protesting in victoria um the construction workers and there were nurses and there were people from every walk of life protesting and evidently it was it was banned. It was banned that you didn't get to see these protests. It was blacked out. They, they, there was a blackout of um, the media. In fact, the media went to court to try and get it overturned. That the the premier of that state, Dan Andrews, made it that they wasn't to be shown outside of the state. Of course, with face with the phones and different medias, it did get round to people. And, and I saw it, and it was amazing to see all these people coming together. But we never heard about it on the mainstream news. So what I'm trying to say is, be careful what you are hearing and what you are perceiving is truth. Remember there is only one truth, and Holy Spirit can quicken it to you, what is truth. We have that as our guide, you know, to tell us when things are wrong and when things aren't quite right. So hear what the Spirit is saying. Be in tune with what the Spirit is saying. I can't help but feel in this time that we are facing some of the biggest challenges today in the world as a church and that we've ever had to face. My question is, what are you believing and what are you listening to? It says in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, 
Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It's sad. It's so sad. I'm actually hearing pastors even say that admonishing people that they should obey the laws of the land when the laws of the land clearly against, go against the word of God. We to submit to authority that is submitting to the, the, the lordship of Jesus Christ. And I will not submit to authority that is, is a dictatorship and that is, is, is against God's truths. I cannot submit to that. Daniel is a prime example of that and Rob preached on this so beautifully recently that Daniel, he, they made a decree that he had to bow down and worship this foreign god. And I'm, I believe that he deliberately opened the windows and he knew they were down there listening to him and he prayed, as he always did, to his God. And he knew it could cost him his life, but that he wasn't prepared to compromise. And I feel that in this time we cannot not speak the truth because it goes to even um, what I feel prophetically is happening in this time and this season, that it's like an Esther moment that we, she went before the king. She actually humbled herself and she knew it could cost her life. And so I just want to unpackage the story a little bit for those that don't know. But Esther was a Jewish queen to, to a king that didn't understand that was her, even her faith. And he had a Haman, our guy, wanting to kill the Jews because he hated them with a passion. So he made up a a thing for the king to sign that the king would actually go and that anyone could kill the Jews on a certain day and it and that it wouldn't be stopped because he said they were rising up they were um, going to take over his kingdom so um, the king believed it however Mordecai was also a Jew and he was the uncle of Esther and he worked for the he worked for the king and he went and pleaded before her he he put ashes on himself and sackcloth. And so when Queen Esther was informed that her uncle was doing this, she, went, she asked the eunuch to go and ask him what's going on. And he told her that, that their people were going to be destroyed on a certain day. Because once the king made a decree, it couldn't be changed. And she, she sent a message back to, the, uh, to Mordecai to say, look, I haven't seen the king in 30, 30 days. He hasn't asked to see me, and so I don't have permission to go. And he said, and this is exactly what he said. He said, this is Esther 4, verse 13. Do, you, do not think in your heart that you will escape the king's palace any, any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will, will arise from the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I believe this is our moment in history that we can stand up and arise up and stand up and fight for truth and justice. Who knows that we haven't come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I believe it is our Esther moment that we can step out and speak the truth. Now, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. And I know that the enemy has tried to actually make people fearful in this time. In fact, many people have made decisions based on, on fear or based on the facts that they've been given. But I just want to challenge you today that it's time to stand up and fight. It's time to stand up and speak the truth. As I said, we need ease to hear what the Spirit is saying in this very time, in this very hour for our nation. It's church and the bride. It's time to arise. It's time to, to pick up the sword of the Spirit, put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, and shod your feet with the gospel of peace. It is time for her, the bride not to be silent you know, we have been silent too much about things that matter to God and I think it's time to hear what he is saying and to know when to, when to speak and when to be silent. But I don't believe this is a time to be silent because just as Mordecai said, you and your father's house may perish. 
So I just want to actually finish today with the song that I wrote about standing up and fighting. Standing up and fighting for the truth. In our nation there is so much going on that is ungodly and it shouldn't be happening. I guess it should, you know, I, I prayed the other day a prayer of repentance for the church and for our nation, for the things that we have allowed in that we should never have because we were silent. And I was recently hearing, um, and it was with Chuck, Chuck Mesler said, the reason that so much happened in, in the Jewish and in the Holocaust for the Jews is because of the silent pulpits in Germany. And I don't want that to be our record. We have generations be coming after us that we need to show them we stood and fought for their freedom. You know, Jesus came to set us free. And the Spirit of the Lord, the same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead, is now in us. And he said in Isaiah 61, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to open the prison doors, to give sight to the blind and recovery from those, and those that are, are, are bound. So we have that same spirit and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And I just want to encourage you to stand firm in your convictions, stand firm in the truth of God's word, to really position yourself to hear what Holy Spirit is saying to you, even through this message. And I just want to pray a spirit of boldness on every one of us. So dear Heavenly Father, you didn't give us a spirit of fear, it is power, love, and sound mind. But Lord, I pray a spirit of boldness to arise on us in this time, in this nation. Lord, let us not shrink back to what you've called us to do. But just as Esther stepped out in faith, let us step out in faith and do what you've called us to do in this time, in this season. There's a call going out across this great land for a strength to unite and fight for liberty from the pioneers before us. Dig us at Gallipoli who fought for our freedoms to make Australians free. So stand for what's right with all of your mind. East and West, under the southern sun, no more division, it's an Australian, with a heart cry for this nation, every tribe and tongue, keep Australia sacred, this land that we love, so stand for what's right, with all of your mind. Australia. Amen.